we're going to be taking a look at Dragon's Dogma 2, a game that I'm very excited about that is the sequel to Dragon's Dogma. It came out a very long time ago at this point. Uh, it had the whole, um, I guess it's like an expansion sort of thing, Dark Arisen. Um, this game looks to be very similar to that. It's bigger, expanded, and we'll get into all that as we go along. Um, I don't know exactly how to explain Dragon's Dogma because it's very unique, so it's difficult to um, compare it to other games. But if I had to say something, I guess it would be like a combination of Dark Souls, Monster Hunter, um, with a bit more story, but it's not really like super story driven. Um, it's, it's like a very open action RPG, uh, that has a lot of big monsters to fight. And that, that's really what the focus is on. Um, so yeah, here it you can kind of get a look at the background of what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we'll be looking at the parts of the trailer later. So I will save that for now. So here is this. Set forth on your grand adventure, Arisen. So Arisen is what the main character is. And the main character is um, so kind of chosen by a dragon the dragon steals your heart and then that's how you become arisen i guess the arisen is kind of immortal i don't know a ton about the the lore but it's cool it's a, it's like a cool concept um i just have this image in my head of the dragon from the first dragon's dogma stabbing you with a a single claw and pulling your heart out <laughs> but it's very very interesting imagery um this is cool so this shows potentially characters i think this is uh one of the leaders of one of the, one of the kingdoms in Drag dragon dogma 2 so there are two kingdoms and um they said it was like a parallel universe so I don't know if that means we'll be seeing some of the, the places that we saw in the original Dragon's Dogma, but there are definitely two different kingdoms that it mentions, so we're going to be exploring those. Um, but yeah, it's a single-player, narrative-driven action RPG. It says narrative-driven. Maybe the second one is more narrative-driven, but the first one wasn't as narrative-driven. It did have a narrative. Um, I guess technically it's narrative driven, right? Um, but yeah, so it, it, it is very open though. Uh, and a big part of that is um, the pawn system, which we'll talk about a bit later as well. The story begins in an underground jail. Gowl? Jail? I'm pretty sure it's jail, but where the dragon's voice echoes in the fog of lost memories. A center is and best me in accordance with the dogma of this world. Uh, so they're kind of set from the start to chase this dragon. Uh, here are... I think this is looking at some of the classes, what the, the action's going to look like. I'll open up the trailer later so we'll get a better look at what that will look like. Wield sword, bows, enchant magic, action that challenges your creativity. So here are the different vocations. Uh, it did talk about in one of the trailers um, some of the vocations. Uh, let me see what this is. So this could be pulling up a trailer. We'll see. Action. Wield swords, bows, and chant magic. World of Dragon's Dogma 2 is meticulously woven to encourage players to try different things. So a lot of... Um, the what the trailer showed is different ways to use the environment to your advantage uh and th so you can see like the the bridge being broken and this ogre falling off from a cliff 
Uh, so here are some of the vocations. Um, here's the fighter vocation. Uh, it doesn't look like I can pull this up. But yeah, it is what you would expect it to be. Uh, the classic fighter class where you're sword and boarding it. Uh, sword and shield. And we have the archer class. Um, archers work in an interesting way in Dragon's Dogma. They're, um, they have an advanced class, which is very unique. And I think this will show it eventually. So we have the thief class. Thieves are less sneaky and more, um, just like a fast agility based character. Um, so you can see one here jumping on the back of an or ogre and stabbing. Mages, magic is done in also a pretty unique way. Um, you have to kind of charge your abilities and then unleash. Um, very cool. Warrior, I don't remember warrior being a class in the original the Dragon's Dogma. I would have to open up a thing and look. It's been a while, so <laughs> I'm not 100% on what those old classes were, but... This looks cool. It's like a big two-handed weapon user. Great swords, hammers. Sorcerer. I think I do remember sorcerers being a thing. Um, vocation specialized in various magic attacks. So it's a different kind of magic user. Looks like it's focusing on big, like very big spells. That's one of the things that made... Uh, Dragon's Dogma really cool is some of the spells are just like massive in size and very very cool Magic Archer so it says it's a vocation exclusive to, to the Arisen one of the things that you can do with a Magic Archer that was very very interesting very unique was you target you do like um how how can I explain this? You can kind of see it in the video where you're targeting specific parts of the body of these creatures and then you unleash it and a bunch of arrows shoot out and hit all the different parts of the creature. And so you can do that with just one creature. You can uh, target multiple different creatures all at the same time. It's, it's very like multi-target, um, big AoEs. We have Mystic Spearhand, which uh, I think is a Dragon's Dogma 2 new thing. Not 100% sure on that, but this is very cool. There are not that many games that I can think of that use spears, just in general. This seems to be uh, something more than that, even. It's like Mystic Spearhand. So you're kind of magic user slash spear user. Then we have trickster. So you're conjuring illusions um, using a sensor, which is like a incense um, thing usually used in religious <laughs> uh, situations. So it's very, very interesting that they'd use it in this way. It looks pretty cool. It's like a lot of AoE attacks, smoke. That looks sick, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of different things you can do in Dragon's Dogma, and that's one of the things that makes it really cool. Uh, so what do we have here? So we have System. Alone but together, company in your single-player single, single player experience. So pawns are one of the things that um, you'll find in Dragon's Dogma. Pawns are... AI controlled characters that you can um, you can pick up along the way. And you'll have your main pawn, uh, and you choose how that pawn looks and what sort of class they use and all of that. Um, and that's the one that will be following you throughout your game. And then you can get uh, two additional pawns. So they're all AI controlled characters. Um, this is something that I. I like and um, 
I'm both like and don't like. Uh, don't like is a bit too, um, a bit too harsh. I, I feel like I wanted something that's a bit more character driven, where the pawns have more of a personality, where their actual characters and their party members and people that you kind of like grow with, like you do in a lot of RPGs. But pawns are more of, like, the old school, um, like, Might and Magic, like, these these older games where they don't have as much of a personality, um, and you are choosing most of what they do yourself. So, at least that's the way it was with Dragon's Dogma 1. Uh, that game... I guess could change in Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe they'll have more personality. Maybe they'll be specific characters. But it's still cool because you can choose your um, your party, the way your party is and what they do. And you can do all sorts of different combinations of classes, which adds a lot to the game. So your pawn specializations. Uh, so one of the things that I talked about in the trailer was that your pawns can have the ability to um, to, to know languages, and it talks about it here. If, if your pawn knows Elvish, for example, then the, the pawn can translate that language for you. Uh, otherwise, you can't understand the elven language, and you don't know what they're saying. So if you try to talk to an elf, and they can't speak your language, you will miss out, <laughs> basically. Uh, so that's something I'm definitely going to be doing. As a character creator, obviously, um, you know, pretty standard, I guess. Journey in, immers in an immersive world. So, yeah, this is one of the things that really was cool about Dragon's Dogma, is the world is big, it's open, you can find quests wherever you're going, uh, Things will happen that you don't expect. Um, everything about open world that you love. And hopefully they'll do things that are unique and different as well. But it the thing that that's cool about Dragon's Dogma is um, it doesn't do as much of an Ubisoft style of open world where you feel like you're just going down a checklist um, everything's marked on the map it it's a bit more open and you'll run into quests organically um so i like that a lot more it does still have some you know quest board sort of stuff but a lot of it is less that more organic days and nights so there's a day and night cycle uh, night is very dark in dragon's dogma um so you have to kind of plan the way you travel based on that. Uh, you have to have the necessary equipment like torches or a lantern. Ox carts. Um, I don't think that was a thing before in the first game. That is a fast travel system. Right. Let's go ahead and look at worlds. A deeply detailed immersive fantasy world. Characters and monsters you encounter um... Yeah, so here's Vermin, the Kingdom of Humani, and Batal, the Nation of Bistrin. So, two different kingdoms for you to explore. Uh, these are completely new to um, Dragon's Dogma 2. I don't remember Vermin being a thing, uh, and if it's in a parallel universe sort of deal, that makes sense. So this is more of your European-style uh kingdom. So, kingdom of humanity, where there is isn't rules as king. The first nation the protagonist explores. A town where the commoners reside sprawls around the castle. So it sounds like there's going to be one sort of city hub with a castle. Uh, and the queen regent Disa. Disa? Disa? Uh, with a false arisen. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. You can get an idea of what that'll look like. Sacred Harbor, home of the elves. So there's like an 
elven place. I don't know if that's going to be a um, just a single town or if it's a bunch of different places. But there will be at least one elf place, remote village. And here, here's Batal. Has more of a um, desert-looking situation. Soup canyons in Batal hold ancient ruins, so a lot of ancient ruins to run through and explore. Yeah, there is that. It looks really cool. And now we have the monsters. Monsters are huge in Dragon's Dogma. This is what the game is all about, is finding monsters wherever you find them. So we have, we have the Drake, kind of dragon, smaller dragon, Dulahan, it's like a headless um, knight wields magic. Talos, so in the trailer there's this massive monster, it's like a metal colossus, white knacker. <laughs> I don't know what that is. A uh, type of goblin, I guess? Minotaur. Uh, first is an extremely bull-headed monster. It's a very classic um, monsters. Rattlers. I think this is like the lizard um, sort of monster, chopper, type of goblin, in the deep forest. Some of these are um, things that are coming back from the old dragon's dogma. A lot of these are. Undead, classic monsters to deal with. Skeletons. I don't remember slimes in dragon's dogma 1, but maybe there were I just never remember seeing them. Ogre. That one's kind of different. Oh, okay, this is the ogre. Uh, the other one was the cyclops. The very large one. So ogre is, it has like fur, it looks like. Golem. This giant rock creature. Chimera. So lizardmen, saurians, harpies, wolves, of course. <laughs> God, wolves are a pain in, pain in the ass. Hobgoblins, goblins. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of a lot of very classic monsters that you'll be finding. I'm sure there's more than that. Here we have characters. The world has inhabitants, various races, each with their own ag agendas and motivations. Um, one of the things that was in Dragon's Dogma is relationships with characters. You could have relationships with every character in the game uh, that you can talk to. Um, and depending on those relationships, you would get quests. Uh, and I think you could even marry the character. I can't remember. But there was some romantic aspect of it that I I remember being in Dragon's Dogma 1. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 1. But it wasn't like... Um, it's not like Persona. You're not going to, you know, get into these uh, entire relationship arcs. At least not... in. Dragon's Dogma 1. Maybe in Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe it's a, a visual novel now. <laughs> Who knows? Probably not. Alright, so we have the dragon, the arisen, and pawns. Cool. Diverse characters that help shape your story. Ulrica, the young leader of Melf, so that's probably like a, a town. She nursed them back to health. There was a character like that in the first Dragon's Dogma. Nadine 
Nadinia, leader of the Batal. So it looks like the kingdom of Batal, um, since it's led by High Priestess, must be a very religious culture. Brant. So that is uh, the queen's captain. Disa, the queen herself. Manella. I don't remember this being in the trailer. This character being in the trailer. So, kind of a new character. Fiercely loyal to Empress Nadinia. Wilhelmina. Proprietress of the Rose Chateau. That's when we'll be seeing Sven. <laughs> Beloved son of Queen Regent Disa, and a candidate to become the next ruler. It makes me wonder what what level of interactions we're going to have with these characters. Are they going to be um, like in Dragon's Dogma One, where you know we there are some characters that get a bit more filled out, but for the most part, there wasn't. A huge amount of um, of interactions with characters, but maybe there'll be more. There wasn't like zero interaction with characters. You you still kind of got to know characters um, in the first one, but I wonder how much they expand on that. So here's an elf character, and then Dwarian. Dwarian, sister of Glindy, Glindor. <laughs> There's no way I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's no chance. A W D W R. Yep, no idea. She too hails from the elves' home in the Four Steps. Yeah, we're getting to know elf characters, which is cool. All right. So this is the showcase. Um, I'm gonna be kind of combing through it. There, I think this was th at the Tokyo Game Show. Shut off a lot of cool things. So we're just gonna be looking at some of how the game actually plays. It's v so here's. Um, you with some pawns finding various things. There's the wolves, uh, some birds. Was that bird attacking that wolf? Hold up. <laughs> Was it attacking the wolf or you? I think that might have been a harpy. Not 100% sure on that. It'd be kind of cool if you had like a, a pet hawk that fights things for you. So yeah, here you're just kind of going through the forest. There's a lot of like traveling around and um, just exploring the world and you'll you'll run across things at random uh, that you just had no idea was going to be there. It's not marked on the map. You're just run into it. Um, so yeah, I this this is what I'm looking forward to. I love exploration in games. Um, I really liked games like Elix because of it, and that game had major jank <laughs> to it. Just the, the most jank you could possibly have, but I liked it because, um, I don't know, it just has exploration like no other game. What am I looking at there? Hold up. So if you if you pay attention, you see the the pawn um with the red hair is floating. <laughs> floating and using magic. So that is interesting. I remember there was like a floating like levitation thing. Um 
in Dragon's Dogma 1, maybe they expand it a bit in, in this game. That'd be cool. Gives you, like, a bit of... Um, a bit more ability to explore, too. I wonder how, if you can, like, go to a certain height, or if it's just, like, a very controlled levitation. How far you can go. So there's, like, the magic. You have, uh, it kind of charges up, and then you unleash. So here's the thief class. See if it shows exactly how it works. A lot of like somersaulting and moving fast. You have two daggers. Um, I think at least in Dragon's Dogma 1 uh, it was one of the only classes that had dodging and that was very important. It's something that I really wanted to have But I think I ended up going with the magic archer, and I can't remember if that had uh, a dodging ability or not. And there, there's one of the ways you can use the environment to your advantage. And this is pretty cool. You knock over this cyclops and then use it as a bridge. I wonder how, um, how scripted that is. If that's like very difficult to do. I can imagine being there for like 30 minutes and trying to knock the thing over and it just never working. That'd be pretty great. So this is Batal. That sort of more um, desert canyon area. And this is you going up a what are those even called like a gondola looking thing uh pretty cool yeah and you you kind of just come upon quests at random people just shout at you and be like hey help me out bro here's the ox cart mechanic that it was talking about just get into an ox cart and then it gets attacked by an ogre good luck so it does allow you to just um, close your eyes and fade to black and then appear near in whatever location um, I'm not sure if it's going to be only specific location I assume it's like towns or something. Nighttime is crazy dark, too. You have to have a lantern. And, uh, in Dragon's Dogma 1, you had to have oil with you at all times in order to fill your lantern up. And if you didn't, you're just kind of screwed. <laughs> Good luck. Unless you, you had, uh, magic abilities with light. So there are campsites and camping. It does show off talking here. Talking to your pawns. So I don't know if those are um, unique characters or if they're just normal pawns. But I would think it'll stick to just pawns. Which I, w I would prefer if there were like unique companions, unique characters. Uh, but... I know that isn't how everyone feels. <laughs> Some people like to just use them basically as a um, party member that just have them shut up and do their job. <laughs> it's fair. That's fair. So there's the magic. Magic Archer has this giant AoE skill, um, lets you target things. Uh, let me see. This is the spear, Mystic Spear. Magic Archer. It's a very different class. The spear looks cool, though. You can just 
uh, telekinesis and just throw bodies. But yeah, there's them targeting specific parts on the monsters and then unleashing. It's a very unique combat system, I think. Um, it takes a lot of the action RPG things that you know from other games, and it expands on them in different ways. That's something that I've only really seen with, uh, with the Souls games, is having that very heavy focus on combat that's like, pushing it and changing it and making it unique and making it all feel so good. And Dragon's Dogma managed to do that in a different way um, that was unique for their game, but still felt really good. That's something to look forward to in the new game. So yeah, that is uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Looks great. Um... I think it is a game that has a lot of potential. It could be really, really good. A top tier game for sure. I would like them to expand things like story and lore, of course, because I'm a nerd and I like those things. But I think even if it is on the same level as Dragon's Dogma 1, um, in terms of those, those things, it's still going to have a lot of cool stuff like exploration and fighting these giant monsters, and hopefully there will be some new monsters, um, like this Talos thing, <laughs> to, to really push things. But yeah, looks great. I'm looking forward to it. It's coming out uh, March 22nd, 2024, next year, on PS5, Xbox Series X, and on Steam. So those are all the different places you can get it. Um, and that's it. Dragon Sogma 2.